Is that clear? हेलो हेलो All the second years move to the corner rows. All the second years move to the corner rows. Like either this corner or else this corner. Try to occupy the front rows first. Otherwise, we'll be again calling you to the front row. First, occupy the front rows.
Second is try to settle in this, uh, si this side or else that side. All the second years try to settle down in the corner rows and the first years in the middle rows. Occupy the front seats. Uh, we'll be again moving you to the front row if you sit in the back. So guys, there is a small note for you. We'll be displaying a QR on the projector. So scan that QR and join in the WhatsApp group. And uh, the panelists will be interacting you. It is not a one-way session. It is a two-side session where the panelists also will be asking you the questions. Make sure you are interactive with them. OK? Try to answer to them like uh, they won't be asking like coding questions and everything like that. It's a general questions. So make sure you are interactive. So when the panelists will be coming, follow the rhythm. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, until and unless they come and settle down. They're arriving within five minutes. So join that group and uh, follow, uh, like uh, join that group and whatever the questions you are getting. Uh, through their panel discussion, try to post it in the group. Either you can ask or else uh, anyone here can ask their questions. Is it clear? Yeah. The, whatever the messages you will be sending will be projected on the screen. If there is uh, any kind of vulgar or any kind of message which is unrelevant, it will be taken serious action. Greetings to the Excellencies, distinguished guests, faculty and the participants. I am Sahiti from the Computer Science and Engineering Department. It is a moment of great privilege and honor for me to welcome you all on behalf of the Computer Science and Engineering Department to the panel discussion on elements of corporate hiring, the corporate perspective which is powered by the IEEE CS chapter. And I am Sadashiva from CSC Computer Science and Engineering Department. IEEE stands for Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. 
is the world's largest technical professional society dedicated to advancing innovations for humanity. It is crafted to serve professionals involved in all aspects of science and technology that underlie modern civilization. Corporate hiring is a dynamic and essential aspect of professional world. And today we have assembled a distinguished panel of experts to delve into this topic. From identifying emerging hiring trends to emphasizing the importance of soft skills and effective talent acquisition strategies, our discussion aims to provide valuable insights for navigating the complexities of recruitment in the corporate landscape. Before we begin, I encourage all participants to actively engage in today's discussion by sharing your questions and insights. Without further delay, let us delve into our exploration of the elements of corporate hiring with our distinguished panelists. I now request Mr. Shankar, Assistant Professor CSC and the Program Organizer to address the gathering. Uh, respected members, the panel members, and all the students. The main agenda of conducting this event, the panel discussion event, is to make sure your career are in a right direction, are in a right path. Department of CSC and Anurag University always works for the student development and student welfare. With that, mission and vision. This panel discussion has been, you know, scheduled to make sure what are the complexities we will be having with respect to the hiring and laying a roadmap for 2026 and 27 corporate hiring. So with this small message, I request all the students, please make a note, whatever the panel member are sharing. Okay. And then Follow that path so that your dreams are converted into reality. With this small message, I thanks to uh, Department of CSC Dean Sir, uh, Dean Swoy Sir, and all the other faculty members. And uh, with this message, uh, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. Please give a round of applause to all the panel members here. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. I now take the privilege to invite Mr. V. Pavan Kumar onto the dais. Mr. V. Pavan Kumar, lead consultant at ThoughtWorks, Birla Institute of Technology and Science, Pilani, has accumulated 17 plus years of experience in building custom software as an architect, consultant, and product developer. He worked on different engagements with clients involving digital transformation, legacy modernization, building cloud native architectures and currently is working on building data intensive applications. Thank you, sir. I now take the honor of inviting Mr. Nivas PCS onto the dais. Mr. Nivas PCS, senior principal consultant, DC manager and learning partner at Infosys Spring brings over 14 years of rich expertise in learning, delivery, management and training. Throughout his career, he has engaged in teaching, training, coaching and mentoring individuals spanning diverse backgrounds from school children and university graduates to professionals and global organizational leaders across different countries. He also worked with retail food and beverages joined as a business intelligence specialist and analysis. I now take the privilege to invite Mr. B. Gautam onto the dais. Mr. B. Gautam, business leader, technology leader, digital transformation entrepreneur. With 17 years of experience in IT and business leadership, he has driven digital transformations, established successful business units, and prioritized hard work and humility. He is currently the head of IT applications at Calabara LLC. He has delivered strategic IT roadmaps, yielding cost savings and business improvement. At Ramco, he led revenue growth and client expansion. He excels in engaging C-level stakeholders and driving digital innovation aligned with organizational goals. Thank you, sir. I now take the honor of inviting Mr. Mahindra, Senior HR Manager at Reliance Geo Infocom Limited. 
He embodies expertise in people management and organizational development with a strategic outlook and focus on the talent acquisition and retention. He plays a pivotal role in shaping the company's workforce. His adeptness in navigating complex HR challenges contributes to Reliance Geo's status as an employee of choice in the telecommunications industry. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I now request moderator of this panel discussion, Dr. K. Mamata, Training and Placement Officer at Anurag University, onto the dais. Dr. K. Mamata earned a doctorate in Management, Human Resources from Usmania University, Telangana, 2012, and Psychology. Initially as a professor and now serving as a Training and Placement Officer, she is a certified CMI Level 5 professional from London. Dr. K. Mamata received the Aspiring Minds Career Guru Award in March 2019. She was recognized as the best faculty in 2019 by Indian Servers and also received Young Achiever Award in 2015. And now I request Dr. K. Mamata to address the gathering. to Anurag University uh, because taking out time on a Saturday uh, to discuss more about uh, this on-campus placement opportunities uh, is very uh, challenging thing and Atu weather is so supportive today and uh, though these are all hot seats for us I think uh, uh, we can have a uh, cool collection of thoughts and ideas which definitely empower the students as well as their campus placement potential is what I believe in. Uh, before we actually uh, get into the, uh, uh, the track, uh, what I would like to understand is because they are in second and first year student, they are still not having any idea about how corporate works and what kind of uh, uh, you know, companies that they need to choose. Because I feel this is the right platform for every one of us to understand how, because emphasis is something uh, uh, huge in numbers as volume uh, size is completely different when compared to uh, Pologra or else Reliance is uh, a business unit or setup which is completely different from Topworks. But uh, can we have uh, some intro about uh, your industries before we actually set the dais uh, for the discussion, sir? Hello everyone, you are able to hear me? Yeah. Yeah. So I would like to talk uh, uh, about ThoughtWorks a uh, few minutes. Um, so ThoughtWorks is a consulting company, it's a premium consulting company. They offer uh, custom software development services. So the service offerings range from uh, legacy modernization, cloud computing, data and AI, and also digital transformation projects. So, uh, if you talk, if you, uh, I just want to also uh, detail about the kind of service offerings we offer. Many companies, like banking, uh, if you look at banking industry, many of the companies they are still have legacy footprint in their companies. So, with the advent of cloud computing, uh, these companies want to leverage these services, and they are on path to migration to cloud. And that's where these legacy modernization related services come into picture. So we help companies modernize their IT footprint. Uh, the second service offering is related to digital transformation. I think earlier IT department was seen as a separate uh, entity or a separate function in an organization. Now it's not true anymore. If you really see the business operates through IT, through technology, if you take companies like Amazon, the core of their business is technology. So I think the businesses are transforming to make technology as core of their business. And that's where the t organization needs to reskill themselves. So what it means is they need to undergo transformation. They, if they have to make their operations digital, uh, there requires a change management, a journey uh, in itself, a very long journey. 
and we as startups we also help uh, organizations to do that digital transformation to transform themselves the third area is on the data uh, and ai service offering uh, predominantly businesses are using data for making uh, decision making uh, data driven decision making data is the new oil that that's what we call uh, and uh, thoughtworks offer offerings related to creating data platforms using leveraging artificial intelligence to improve business operations improve engineering efficiencies uh, and also generate uh, new streams of revenue so this is one area again we uh, uh, this is one of the service offerings the last offering is on uh, the uh, digital application management and operations so, so there are companies who have their footprint have it footprint they are in production but their systems are not stable they want reliability in their systems and that's where they come to thoughtworks for reliability engineering so these are the four service offerings uh, we are like uh, f uh, 40 offices global uh, globally we are a multinational company uh, uh, centered in Ch uh, chicago uh, and uh, we operate in di four different markets apoc north america uh, and uh, southeast asia uh, and also europe Uh, and uh, i work as a tech partner for the accounts in europe uh, i am the market tech partner and uh, my role there is to work on client pursuits tech governance of uh, client accounts uh, and also i play advisory role uh, for clients in improving engineering efficiencies building platforms so that's that's about me that's about thought works briefly thank you okay so uh I never thought I'll be introducing Infosys, uh, but uh, I'm sure most of you are aware of this company. But uh, uh, just to put across uh, what Infosys is, uh, I'll probably go to the grassroots as to where it started. Uh, so uh, I'm sure this story is quite popular, where uh, seven people, uh, the co-founding members of Infosys, one day decided that they want to start a company, uh, did not have the money, so they took a, uh, so Murthy took a loan from uh, his wife, some ten thousand rupees. and started a company in uh, pune uh, in a in an apartment with a basic furniture of uh, a, a table and three chairs so we started an it company without a computer it is so said that uh, we used to use uh, uh, papers to write our code on and rent a computer for an hour or two to make sure our code works uh, those were the uh, but uh, s even then uh, something which was very clear Uh, was we were always driven by uh, our values and powered by in our intellect that has been the tagline for a good number of years so uh, we realized that we are if we are starting a company which has to survive uh, more than 40 50 years we have to ensure that uh, we are giving importance to the kind of intellect we are providing to our clients and we are going to stick very strong to our values Uh, that is we have to ensure that uh, whatever we're doing we are doing it in the right manner uh, today infosys has grown to a space where uh, across your campus uh, we have our campus uh, which is uh, 450 acres of land where more than 40000 employees come and work so uh, we have uh, we have uh, gone on days where we only had seven people in uh, one uh, and the entire company we are now have 40000 in just one campus Uh, but if you really want to understand uh, what do we do uh, in the layman terms if i could uh, make you understand uh, the world is filled with a lot of companies who are good at uh, doing their businesses so we have uh, companies car manufacturers who are good at making cars we have uh, people who are very good at laying roads and building bridges we have clients who have who are very good at making shoes uh, and build or even manufacturing airplanes Uh, but what they may not be that good at is managing their IT services, and that's where we come in uh, as a uh, support system, where uh, right from say uh, POS machines for the shoe manufacturer to designing uh, the premium cars to understanding how the internal peripherals of the uh, aeroplane should go, and uh, to to the basics of. Uh, creating animations for some uh, movie making companies we come in everywhere where 
IT can resolve the problems which the world is facing today, right? And we are also in the process of creating the world of future. We are constantly in a space where we are trying to understand what problems the world might face in future and can we solve them today using uh, IT uh, or using uh, technologies which are not even invented as of now. So that is a pursuit on which we have always been. Uh, and that is why today our tagline is navigate your next, which is we are constantly looking at the future and trying to see if we could navigate to it in the right manner possible. Right? And we definitely require help of all the students here and all the students in India to ensure that we do that because uh, in the next is definitely you guys who are going to create the future of the world and India. Uh, so thank you so much. Uh, I have a quick question. Is it so that like Nandan uh, Nilekani, um, uh, who is the uh, you know b backbone for uh, this Aadhaar and uh, yes. you know, um, and when he was with one of the founder uh, people in among the seven, uh, is that so that he brought one computer machine from USA? Um, keeping it in, uh, holding it tightly in a <laughs> plane, is that correct? Okay, so Nandan happens to be one of our uh, beloved leaders uh, and uh, he's one of the co-founding members. In fact, the fact that you guys are using Aadhaar uh, uh, is uh, his master plan uh, and uh, this is something which has been uh, say appreciated by the world, a lot of uh, people around the world, a lot of politicians, a lot of countries are are appreciating about how a uh, mass populated country like India is able to create a system like Aadhaar. Uh, and I would say not just Nandan, but uh, every seven or e even today I would say every single person who works with Infosys is so passionate that sometimes uh, these stories uh, become a legend and uh, now there's so many stories about Nandan, there's so many stories about Murti, there's so many stories about Shibulal that uh, we, uh, we, are, uh, we are very proud that those stories exist uh, but uh, we are also very happy that uh, even leaders today look up to the leaders of the past and we are creating new stories as well. Thank you. Good, good morning everyone. So I work for uh, Collabra. So we are in the business of uh, finding jobs for uh, people. So Collabra is, uh, I mean, I work for Collabra LLC, which is part of uh, Collabra Group. Uh, as a group, uh, we have five different companies. Uh, we have uh, Collabra Digital, uh, which is in uh, engineering services and st uh, staffing, which serves, uh, North, uh, which serves Europe and uh, APAC India. Then uh, we have Ascendion, uh, which is, uh, engineering services company, and uh, I work for Collabra LLC, which is part of uh, the same group. We uh, are in staffing uh, uh, in North America, and we have a couple of other companies uh, uh, which are in talent management space. We have Haiku, which is a talent platform company, and we have Cognitia, which is a learning and development uh, company. So as a group, we are in uh, talent management space, end to end talent management space. Uh, I represent Collabra LLC, uh, which is a staffing company in uh, North America. Uh, within Collabra, I uh, head the IT applications portfolio for uh, Collabra LLC. As uh, Pawan and uh, Nivas were mentioning, so we take care of all the uh, IT business application needs for Collabra, so to run the business. So how IT can help improve the business, how IT can help run the business profitable, faster, everything, right? All the transformation that uh, other panel members were mentioning. So we take care of that for Collabra, not for other clients. Uh, so that's that's what uh, we do. Uh, good morning. Uh, uh, I'm from Reliance uh, Geo. Uh, basically, Reliance is a big uh, industry, basically part of uh, diversified industries, Reliance Industries, uh, headed by Ambani Group. Everybody knows, right, Ambani, uh, familiar with Reliance brand. I comes from the one of the partner company, Geo, Geo, which is into telecommunications, basically. Uh, uh, we uh, we started the business in the very short span. Uh, 2016, we entered in this business. Now we become the world second largest company across the globe in the telecommunications. 
as you know jio operates only everybody knows uh, common man knows that we operate only give the sim cards and handsets but of course we give the lot of a uh, technology uh, products like uh, uh, complete digital transformation uh, so uh, name it anything uh, we be into healthcare pharma agriculture so the aim of this company into empowering the every indian uh, uh, under the digital era utilization digital uh, transformation every indian should connect with the digital transformation Ev empowering every indian to connect the across the globe uh, in all the segments be manufacturing be pharma be it agriculture anything so today in indian segment uh, in india we are the per capita major revenue uh, the uh, G per capita income comes through pharma only, uh, the agriculture only see we have a lot of fantastic products we brought the, with the 5g uh, technology uh, that is if you googled it a uh, geo krishi is a, one of the greatest product which help the farmers complete transformation uh, right from understanding the climates uh, understanding the soil uh, the technology giving the insights of the uh, the farmers about the crop about the the yields and about the the process and, and the uh, roi of the crops that is a uh, the fantastic products of course we have a 5g we recently chat gpt everybody knows right so similar to that geo brains uh, brian geo brain if everybody google that it's a 5g technology app which is recently launched so you're going to see this beauty of this product okay so for everybody experience the mobile internet and the home internet so basically company operates in on three platforms that is uh, sim cards and handset telecommunication and enterprise will give the complete end to end solutions to the enterprises okay then third one is end user that is end user like you and me so to use an internet we broaden it rapidly 5g technologies short life based air fiber which is feasibility post corona pre corona we have seen lot of changes in the digital era so uh, on a digital platform everybody every corner of india everyone is accessing the internet or exploring their knowledge or googling the information or machine learning a lot of products you are seeing right all of which is integrated by 5g and also we are coming up with this 6g also what are we promised we definitely we charge with the fashion success, uh, with a uh, with a long term goal so 2016 company was the first company started we were the first company in the across the globe standing at 11th position the bottom the same year ending at the same year we became the top 5 the next year we became in india number 1 2017 till now we are become an undisputed leader in the telecom segment telecommunication segments so jio has a variety of products a uh, jio uh, brains was introduced by uh, this is a hardcore engineers who worked extensively 2 years so like you all all the engineers uh, csc students they spent over the night two years complete the work to introduce a jio brain so you google it that the beauty of the product will definitely will demonstrate to the going forward so uh, already started we have a digital jio world city which is in mumbai world class facility you will going to see the artificial environment ai iot products machine learning products we have a lot of products to introduce in india so main aims to empowering every indian to digital and thank you thank you very much sir uh, because uh, people also students especially when they will listen to uh, uh, the you know indian establishments operating from europe maybe 40 50 countries across the globe uh, south america okay indian one of the largest might be setting up ventures from dubai may happen in moving forward because these are all the stories across the globe even reliance has their own business operations see all these uh, you know um, discussions will definitely empower students to uh, choose the 
Indian companies uh, and they, they may get aspired to work. But before actually we start the uh, discussion which is related to campus placements or their preparedness, they will have a common mindset uh, being an engineer. Why should I study mathematics one, mathematics two, basic programming or PPS or physics, chemistry labs, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. Is there anything which is, uh, you know, uh, which you think that is really important as far as core or functional engineering is concerned? And it is all about problem solving, right? Which we have been talking about. Uh, when it is problem solving, what kind of uh, subjects? they need to focus more on uh, as part of their engineering uh, education. Can, you pl can we have some discussion on it? Um, uh, if you can throw some light on it, it will definitely help them because they will prioritize which subject they need to um, make it as important and which can be ignored uh, only for scoring purpose that they can. Can we have uh, some thoughts on that, sir? So how many of us use mobile phones? All of us, right? So we watch YouTube daily. <coughs> you get to see the recommendations in YouTube, right? Like when you, when you watch videos, I think you would have noticed, you get videos like based on your watch history. Instagram. Yeah, Instagram, uh, sorry. I, I am a li little bit old, <laughs> so old school. Yeah, Instagram. So you start seeing videos which are like very related to your interests. How does that work, right? Uh, did we think about it any time? Uh, we buy items in Amazon. Let's say you buy an engineering drafter. The moment you add them into cart, you see a scientific cal calculator as item you might like. I think you would have observed that, right? How does that work? Uh, you, you use ChatGPT. Uh, how, how many of you use ChatGPT? Can you raise your hands? Yeah. So what, what is the technology behind that? Did, did we think about it? Uh, and uh, also, uh, you, we get to, uh, we, we, we see autonomous driving cars, we hear about an autonomous driving cars, semi-autonomous driving cars. So we actually, if you really see in our day-to-day -day lives, there are practical use cases we are using technology. We are happy about using the technology, but as engineers, if you really think about like what is behind these technologies, uh, let me just take one use case, right? Like YouTube recommendations, how's that? How does that work? So when you start browsing videos, uh, you there is a algorithm which is running in the back end to determine your user preferences, your uh, uh, watch history, and also there are techniques to uh, classify your the v, the images that are in the video, right? And to categorize the videos, saying that oh, you are watching. Uh, videos related to cricket, you are watching uh, videos related to films, right? Telugu films. Uh, it starts categorizing the uh, videos based on uh, the uh, your user preferences and of course the kind of content that is there in the visual, right? Uh, and also it predicts what kind of uh, video that you want to see in future. If you really look at the uh, technology behind it, for user preferences, uh, and looking at your watch history, we use uh, deep neural networks. Uh, and also in order to classify the images, uh, whether they are like uh, related to cricket, they are related to films, you use actually uh, recurrent neural networks. Uh, and also in order to uh, predict, uh, you use uh, again neural networks, arti artificial intelligence. And if you really see the uh, uh, technologies behind, you just back work backward, uh, the deep neural net, in order to understand deep neural networks, you need to understand linear algebra, vector calculus, probability statistics, discrete mathematics, and automata theory. I think, uh, how many of you, I think first year, second year, you would have had all these subjects, right? Uh, I think in the second year, you have discrete mathematics and probability and statistics. Uh, if you really want to, similarly, you look at any use case, how ChatGPT works, it's based on GANs. And if you go back, that you need to really have fundamentals in mathematics. So what I would suggest is observe the use cases, uh, observe the day-to-day -day use cases that you encounter where 
you see that there is there might be a cool technology behind it do chat gpt you will know like what kind of technologies are used you go back and see like what are the underlying foundational subjects you find mathematics linear algebra and these these kind of uh, subjects that are foundational i think these are very important if you want to pursue a career in artificial in intelligence you need to have these foundations uh, the second thing is let's say uh, i uh, i want to conclude by just uh, giving one more scenario uh, thoughtworks is a consulting company so we are into cu custom software development so we look for coding skills right able to develop code deploy in production make it useful for customers so i think the uh, the programming languages that you are uh, learning right c python r how do you process data at scale database management systems big data i think these are all useful in different settings that i was talking about right the different service offerings we offer all of these subjects are foundational so i think this is the time that you need to really focus on the subjects make your foundation strong so that you can adopt those technologies and uh, 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 make a winning impression in your careers right so i think uh, that's that's what i wanted to uh, say okay so uh just just thinking about the question as to uh, what subjects uh, should we ignore and if there are any such subjects i don't think it should be a part of the syllabus as well every single subject which is uh, kept there as a part of a syllabus i'm sure a lot of people have put in a lot of thought uh, before putting uh, that particular subject over there and it's very naturally and in fact i also watch a lot of youtube right so uh, a lot of uh, places where people say that uh, this is not important that subject i never use in my entire life and all that but uh, my basic understanding about why people get recruited from engineering colleges to our companies why not uh, why don't we hire 12 standard students why don't we hire maybe uh, some other discipline to, into the major uh, say chunk of our, our recruitment process why engineers right we do hire from different uh, disciplines as well but if the question is why engineers the answer is very simple and let me connect it back to the previous uh, answer that i gave infosys and most of the it companies are problem solvers we solve problems for the future we solve problems for the companies who are doing other businesses which means that we are looking for people who have an analytical brain and i strongly believe that when you're going to an engineering college for the four years you become a logical thinker you become an analytical thinker where you're looking at cons complex concepts trying to understand how those complex concepts are going to make sense in your brain and how you could kind of make sense about how the world functions be it be chemistry be it be physics be it be mathematics be it be any of the complex uh, say subjects uh, uh, that you have studied right so it is basically helping your brain to understand and uh, make something make sense in your brain right so once you start working that process in your brain is going to help you solve these problems right so uh, in infosys we say that don't hire people for the skills that they have but look for the right set of competencies there's a huge difference between skill and a competency the way we look at it is uh, we define a competency as knowledge skill and attitude in simple we call it as ask attitude skill and knowledge so uh, if if you really figure out what that means is you should have knowledge about something now now infosys focuses on your communication skills right what do i mean by knowledge knowledge is a basic ability to understand how english grammar functions and how a basic language uh, goes from one person to another that is that is basic knowledge skill is an ability to use that knowledge to have a great communication and the attitude is to given that you have the right set of knowledge and skill would you be in a position to speak to people given an opportunity right today if i ask you to ask questions how many of you i know you're all skilled uh, in speaking in english you have knowledge but how many of you are willing to put up your hand and talk to us that is the ability to use your skill and knowledge right so these things are possible only if you give enough importance uh, to your uh, subjects 
uh, whatever it be. Use it as a way of building your brain to uh, make it capable for uh, tomorrow's problems is what I say. So do not let go of any subject. In fact, I would recommend uh, be curious, go and find out stuff which doesn't, uh, is not a part of your curriculum. Go and include yourself in events like these or events at which where you can contribute, learn new things, uh, be inclusive about how, uh, say, a certain things work. Uh, if you have an old phone at home which nobody is using, break it and see what is inside and what, and how it how the hardware behind it is, right? So uh, sometimes it's okay to break the things which work as well. Uh, don't uh, don't break the costly ones, right? But uh, in general, in order to ensure that you get a job, we constantly check if you can add value, and you can add value only if your uh, top floor, which is your brain, functions properly. So uh, those are my two cents. I'm sure my colleagues will say a few things as well. Uh, same kind of uh, uh, you know articulation as far as subjects are concerned. As we have got one uh, basic recommendation that is ask. Uh, I have a couple of questions related to it because you asked uh, us to ask some questions. Uh, along with this question, can we know, uh, is it okay to have only the abilities, uh, you know, attitude, skills and knowledge, not the required percentage to get into the companies? Or do they require or uh, any specific intellectual ability? Uh, and before getting into any company, do you look at uh, the uh, GPA or CGPA or percentage, basic percentages, and how it works in multiple industries? And uh, as far as freshers are concerned, what is the basic minimum eligibility criteria that you always look at is my next question. But uh, you can add uh, to the first question. Thank you so much. Thank you. So I think uh, Pawan and Nivas uh, covered it about uh, why it is important, right? But let's look at it at uh, another angle as well. So engineering is not just about uh, to get a job somewhere and uh, just live, right? It's, it also prepares for uh, your life. Let's say tomorrow you're building a house. Uh, is it? I think it is common sense to have your water tanker in the first floor and uh, build a house in the ground floor, right? But uh, if you don't know gravity, you might end up uh, building water tanker in the ground floor and uh, building your house in the first floor, right? So I think whatever you study here uh, in the engineering, it's not just about job. It also prepares you for your uh, basic life skills. So it is uh, very important that you know we focus on every single subject and course that is out there. It's not just about job. So that's one uh, additional point uh, I wanted to make uh, with respect to uh, first question about what courses are important or what can be ignored or what can be used only for scoring. Right? So everything is important. Now coming to that scoring uh, aspect, you know, uh, I think the question is, uh, is it just okay to have the skill but not have the CGPA? How does CGPA matter? Right? So let, let me ask you this one. Uh, in a year, uh, how many engineering graduates, or uh, let's say how many graduates are coming out uh, into the market? Few lakhs, right? At least 10, 15, maybe 20 lakhs. Engineering, MCA, MBA, all put together. Now, imagine if there is no CGPA criteria, how would uh, any company filter out uh, the applicants? Right? So you might, you might have the required skill, but uh, your uh, Grade points also definitely matters because that, that will act as a filter, number one. Number two, in my view, it also serves as uh, to, uh, one measure to measure your uh, attitude towards uh, the framework of engineering or framework or framework of uh, subjects and framework of exams. How well you are uh, ready to face such exams or you know, how well you are organized towards your uh, subjects and day-to-day -day life. So these two are uh, the measures for uh, you know why we look at CGPA. So it is definitely important to have that CGPA or whatever percentage, whatever is the uh, nomenclature here, along with your skills. And just having CGPA and not having skills also will not help. Yeah. 
Okay, so uh, bef before my colleague takes it, uh, the question is, uh, I know I get a lot of emotional questions like this. Why do you look at CGPA? Uh, don't you see in the world out there the people who failed engineering but uh, started their own companies, successful companies, uh, people who dropped off from colleges but made it big? I agree with all of that. Uh, and I'm sure people who are dropping off uh, with a mindset of starting the companies are quite good as well. So I'm not discouraging, uh, uh, I, I, and there's a lot of merit behind it. But for companies like that, us to understand that you're good, there has to be some criteria for us to understand. Very simply put, uh, there's an IPL match going on right now. You tell me if somebody is playing very well in the nets, like they have the skill, uh, they can uh, hit the ball around and all that. But on the day of the match, they are not scoring more than 10. How long do you think they'll survive in the main team? Right? So exams are sim very, very similar. Uh, while practicing in nets is very, very important, and you can only do that if you have the right skills and all that. But displaying it to the world out there as to what your capabilities are, is also important. If uh, there's a player, and I'm pretty sure you know a lot of players who have the capability, but because they're not able to show it up in the uh, in the actual match, uh, today they don't play with the uh, cricket team anymore, right? So, uh, and if that is okay, then this is uh, this is also the right thing which is happening in the world. Sorry. So, as we, the panels rightly said, uh, so wanted to understand from you, basically uh, a success of every organization uh, depends on the value proposition, basically. And fueled with technology, 100% success, okay? You've seen many of the companies. Let's say, uh, uh, you take any company, okay, manufacturing or consumer durable or technology-based company. Today, the expectation of the customers are different the once we fuel with technology, then meeting the expectations of the customers is different. It makes a difference, okay? And everybody aspire to have a Apple phone, MacBook, or a fancy car, okay? So let's say you want to buy a Apple phone, or a, which is advanced features. Uh, today you want to pay money, you have to wait for to get a handset in your hand, th maybe after weeks no time. Will you agree? So there is a lot of disappointments. So I have chosen that advanced phone. It should be in my hand the day, the moment I paid from the cash. The expectations gone up. So similarly, every organization fueled with a technology, innovation, outbox thinking. Okay? So what is the value proposition of a company? Value proposition companies, how I am, take, uh, how I am doing a business, how I am exploring the business, how I am generating business, how I am my customers are placing, what is my customer trend, what are the customer expectations and needs, will I meeting their needs? These are the expectations. Okay, when it comes to a student, similarly companies also having the same employee value propositions, okay, yes. Be in the top, uh, the uh, customer value propositions. We mix up with the employee uh, propositions, okay? Company will look at the, uh, the fundamentally strong, uh, the employee strength, okay? They come up with a lot of innovation, employer branding activities. You've seen every company which does the employee branding, employee branding, employer branding. So what does this mean? So we are exploring, we are stimulating the employee students come and join the organizations with, with your core strength, okay? So be it any subject, okay? Someone with the fundamentally strong, someone with the problem solving skills, someone with analytically strong, someone with mathematically strong algorithms. Every mix of this, all this mix of these people will definitely make the success of the organization, okay? Let's say every organization looks around the uh, the uh, cycle time. Everybody knows, even any engineer knows the cycle time. Okay? To manufacture a thousand iPhone, one lakh iPhones, how many days you will required? Can anybody guess? Okay, cycle time in the sense, uh, see, 
Samsung, you see, uh, Samsung, we have, they never compromise in the quality. We are the number, there's a Korean uh, brand, so they never compromise in the quality, okay? So the beauty of the Samsung is quality, highest quality they'll maintain, okay? The before starting Samsung launching, there were the cycle time about one TV or something, anything, and set or TV, any consumer product. So they have a cycle time about 150 minutes, one product. So the expectation from the customers, the huge, the footfall of the expectation, uh, the kind of requirement outside is huge. Okay, how I'm going to increase, decrease the cycle time? How I'm to bring up the efficiency? Okay, uh, yes, of course I need engineers. Engineers who can thought process, give the insight, bring up the efficiency of the product, meeting the customer uh, the expectation, meeting the quality standards. Yes, I need engineers who can think out of the box, who can give the insight, who can s spend along with the organization, who can make the organization a better way, increasing the efficiency putting their thought process, okay? Now, there is a pilot project, okay, let's say, I wanted to bring it the cycle time, rather than 150 minutes to 60 minutes. So, there is a pool of engineers given a project, okay? Now, I wanted to produce end product with a 50 minutes, okay? Right from 150 to 50 minutes, 60 minutes, let's say. So, there is huge gap, 60 more minutes. How to decrease this? efficiency uh, improve efficiency rather completing end product so there is a lot of brainstormings okay so now the brains like engineers like be it electrical mechanical csc everybody worked hard so the core fundamentals base remains same our mathematics logic sense algorithms everything common but applied and advanced uh, the processes where we, the students given thought processes, logical thinking, problem solving, critical thinking, okay? These are the basic, the principles. Once we adapt, the sky is unlimited for every students, everybody. Thank you. Uh, now, uh, at one uh, point, yes. and CGPA, maybe we can, we can cover it later. Yes. So uh, just on the CGPA, uh, whether there is really a hard requirement for some CGPA, uh, I think uh, uh, Gautam was also mentioning. So thought I just want to talk about uh, how thought works like companies hire, right? Uh, see, I think uh, usually comp uh, companies like Infosys, TCS, they hire in bulk. They do mass hiring, right? At that point of time, uh, really they might have different criteria for choosing, but if you really take small companies, we have like a pool of thousand people, but uh, the requirement is like nine to 10 people. Finally, we get to hire nine or 10 people. So given that, the criteria would be multifold. One, of course, if you have to filter thousand people is CGPA, uh, but given the nature of company, let's take ThoughtWorks, uh, they are into consulting. So they really look for consulting and custom development. So they really look for people who are very good in coding, uh, who can write applications, who can design well, and also who can consult. Consult meaning able to articulate the value, give reasoning, and also be able to communicate well, right? So these are some of the skills they look. Uh, so in order to filter further, what they do is they look at how you do, uh, like what are your coding skills, right? Do you have a rank in HackerF? Do you have a rank in lead code, right? So these are some of the filter criteria they apply beyond the CGPA. So while CGPA is good, if you have a higher C CGPA but do not have other skills, right, like consulting skills, or you are not like a, uh, diverse in terms of uh, acquiring your skills beyond CGPA, uh, then I think you have a very less chance of getting hired because CGPA is only one of the elements and you need to uh, balance all of the other uh, skills as well, right? Like you need to uh, have soft skills, you need to uh, be representing in some coding community so that you get noticed, right? Uh, so we need to make a balance at times like 
people try for like a very high CGPA, which is good, but at the same time, you, you need to uh, also make sure that you also acquire the other skills. Just wanted to call it out. Yeah, I have same question uh, linked to lead code or whatever the, uh, um, especially algorithm based or problem solving related coding platforms which basically works beyond uh, academics. And uh, of course there is a connection between what we offer and uh, what industry is looking at. As rightly pointed out, uh, the world is very small. And uh, even industry is also looking at the candidates and uh, they will be getting shortlisting from the GitHub profiles or sometimes we are facing it very uh, challenging as a training and placement officer. Uh, I always ask my team, how many students are with LinkedIn profiles? How many students are with lead code profile? Uh, how many students are with hacker anchor above five, five stars? How many students are with, um, uh, you know, Git, GitHub uh, used cases? Or else how many have contributed uh, in the, uh, you know, uh, Git, uh, GitHub especially? It's Microsoft product, right? Unless it is important, they will not come up with such kind of platforms. And uh, those are all playing major role. And uh, our students are very active in creating all these things. They do uh, hold a LinkedIn uh, a learning profile. And uh, they are the frequent visitors to almost all these platforms. We have introduced them Hacker Anchor uh, platform. But uh, they've been very fascinated to attend Hack hackathons are uh, uh, in multiple colleges and universities. And uh, I feel there are uh, not less than 50% of the Indian companies which are organizing, uh, investing in, uh, you know, attracting the talent pool uh, in, the, in the India, especially engineering graduates by conducting industry specific hackathons. How relevant are those for this generation and uh, uh, is it okay if they will start working on such lines? Because most of the top companies uh, hires their interns only through competitions and uh, hackathons. Can we have some light on that? Because all these students are from computer science background. If a teacher comes and if I go and say something, they won't listen. Okay, uh, can we have some support on that? Because I, we just wanted to understand, curious to know about the learning platforms or hackathons or internships, how these kind of platforms going to support them in terms of getting highly paid job opportunities when they will uh, move to their final year. Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, I'll just uh, start answering this question, but uh, uh, okay, so let's, let's ask, uh, let's, let's look into yourself uh, Infosys uh, in the last few years have invested heavily on a digital learning platform called Infosys Springboard, right? I'm sure some of you might be aware of it. And in this particular platform, what we do is we make, uh, say, hackathons available for students completely free of cost. We have a lot of uh, courses like Python or Salesforce, a lot of, uh, say, uh, or uh, something that you want to know about Agile or even soft skills, let's say, for example, you want to learn design thinking, you want to understand how to communicate better, you want to learn basic English, right? So we have, we are completely offering it uh, and it's Infosys certified courses or sometimes these are Harvard certified or say Coursera certified courses which are available completely free of cost. Uh, but what we have also realized is even though we are providing it completely free of cost, a lot of students are not availing or not aware that these things are available, right? And the aspect that you asked, uh, uh, we have, we we come up with these, uh, say, hack, hackathons, basic hackathons. In fact, uh, we are doing an, a kind of an online learning program just for women called Pragati. Uh, we, we realize that uh, a lot of college students do not even apply, whereas ninth and 10th standard students are applying for that. So sometimes we, it makes us question, uh, where are college students busy uh, so much so that this is uh, because we have opened it for everybody 9th and 10th and 11th and 12th standard uh, children are applying and uh, uh, I'm not sure if you're reading news uh, there's a recent news which talks about a 11th standard child came to our platform studied how to build games on an Android 
on a Play Store. He has developed his own games and has put it on Play Store and is earning his pocket money. What is stopping you? You don't have to wait for a hackathon, right? What is stopping you from learning by yourself? And today, most of the education is free of cost. You go to YouTube, there's so much to learn from YouTube. So uh, nothing stopping us from gaining a certain skill. Uh, you don't have to pay a tremendous amount of money to learn anything. But it is a curiosity that I spoke about. Uh, in fact, uh, surprisingly, uh, Infosys conducts a hackathon called Hack with Infi, which is a world-renowned, uh, it has won so many awards around the world to be one of the best hackathons that, that has been conducted in the country. Uh, and uh, it is also a recruitment platform where uh, if you usually go through basic recruitment of Infosys, the salary is around 4 lakhs. But this is about uh, around 10 lakhs of salary. That Will I pass it? Will I crack it? Just apply. Uh, I had, a, I had a, a student come to my campus a few days back and they started asking, why, why are you not hiring us? Right? So, uh, so I asked that person, when did you apply? They said, I did not apply. So first you do your due diligence. First you ensure you figure out what is happening. You figure out, uh, say, the avenues where you can get yourself educated on things that are taught beyond their college. Show that interest. And that I'm sure things, more doors will open up for you. So that is, that is my advice, that uh, indulge in these activities as much as possible. That will also enable you to solve uh, the problems that we think our clients are offering us. So I think uh, the question is, uh, are hackathons important for students? Do they really have to take time out, right? So let's take this example. Before uh, joining uh, Anurag University, I'm sure you all must have done your own research. What is this comp college about? And you know, what is the placement percentage? What companies are coming for campus placements? You must have gone through their website. You must have reached out to your seniors your uh, known people, whoever is studying here, how is the faculty, what are the facilities and all, right? Now similarly think of it like this, when you apply for a job, why should I trust you just based on your resume, right? Or why should uh, somebody trust you just based on uh, how you have written their uh, uh, exam or whatever, right? Because you might be great at remembering things and you might pass the exam, but your hacker, your, uh, hacker rank profile or you know your GitHub profile or your Achievements in uh, various hackathons, those are your testimonials, right? So that will that will serve as a marketing material for you. Right? So always, uh, I, see it is good to just apply for a job with your resume, you might get it, no doubt about it. Uh, but always be uh, over prepared than being under prepared, right? So that that's my uh, take on uh, this one. Thanks. Uh, sir, I have one more quick question. Uh, which is related to their discipline. Because uh, uh, though they know that this is very important and essential, uh, they prioritize subjects. Uh, they know, uh, you know, CGPA matters as far as uh, their uh, higher education prospects or else their, uh, you know, campus placements are concerned. But still there is something which is always lagging because they have a lot of peer pressure. Uh, the people who ever sit next to them, uh, they will definitely influence them. Though these people are very much interested, uh, but uh, these kind of challenges this generation is facing. Uh, like how Niva sir was uh, pointing out and uh, you know, Mahindra sir was also talking about critical thinking. Uh, they stopped uh, being crazy sometimes to broke certain things because they were very curious when they are young, but that curiosity lost. Now, I don't know where these uh, kids are, because they might be uh, undercovered with, uh, uh, you know, a motion called reels. Okay. They will be busy all the time. Maybe eight to nine hours you will spend in a day uh, watching reels. Uh, so, uh, value proposition, which we talk about, 
or else uh, values or else ethics when we talk about as far as corporate is concerned because Anurag University is built on uh, only one thing that is we wanted to introduce the corporate environment to the student. So when we see the entire campus, either it is with infra or it is with plantation. Okay, the same thing happens as far as uh, uh, large uh, uh, set of companies are concerned with. So when these students will go back and join in the corporate, what kind of values and ethics they need to have and uh, value proposition in terms of uh, the amount that they will take as part of their CTC or salary and how loyal they should be and do you offer them any kind of bond or else, you know, agreement with them? Is it okay to sign a bond for about one and a half, two years? What do you suggest? Can you please throw some light on it, sir? Okay. Uh, nothing as such in the industry. Basically, uh, you have your own expectations. Uh, similarly, a family man has their own expectations. Uh, similarly, corporates having has their own expectations. So end of this day, everybody working for a common goal. Do something, gain something. Okay, do something, gain something. So in this, uh, the, the, the kind of uh, the expectations from the universities, colleges, and the corporates, okay, IRM, Gayaram, Gaya. Okay, people have the intensity, but having the sense of, okay, let me see, I will see, I look after, this is the symptoms of BP sugar. BP sugar commonly collapses the man. Okay. Uh, for the student, if you are holding, okay, I will see, I look, I'll prepare, I'll write, they can get, you'll collapse. Okay, we never know. But to regulate these symptoms, you have to continuous learning should be there. Continuous learning. If you stop marathon, definitely you'll collapse. Okay, the marathon definitely has a, some goal. Okay, one day he'll uh, run one kilometer, next day he'll keep increasing. His main intention to reach the highest goal. As a similar should, a student should have similar cons, the skill, uh, the, the intention, the goals, aspirations. So synchronizing all this, okay, today I wanted to get into this XYZ career, okay? So what is the industry is basically looking out, okay? So classical example, I can put it forward. Uh, everybody going McDonald's cafe or being to Decalton, you've seen Decalton, right? Decalton stores, okay? Uh, we used to uh, see, have you seen any self-check-in, check-out in the Decalton? The recently launched, okay? The self-check-in, okay? So to bring up that customer expected self-check-in, check-out, there is a thought process, okay? So what is the reason the company brought into this self-check-in, check-out, okay? to meet the, give the customer delight, experience, gaining the customer. The common goal is do something, gain something here, right? Uh, similarly, you also think, okay, there are industries, there are uh, enterprises, definitely will give the career path. Of course, companies need a men, uh, the, uh, the students like any uh, the people. Human capital is very important, compared to the machines. So, opposite is always there, but your thought process has to change, okay? First, make yourself checklist, okay? Let's say I'm studying here. I wanted to pursue an XYZ career. I wanted to build up an organization. I wanted to be in a, like an entrepreneur. I wanted to be an independent consultant, a freelancer, okay? To reach out, make out the, your expectation, synchronize the external uh, expectations, okay? Fueled with your thought process, okay? So you do some engineering, inner engineering concepts. Then your success makes easy, okay? No need to bother about the, the industry, the no need to bother about how an organization. Typically, the companies previously, we used to go through the a lot of applications. We used to call the, we used to come to campuses, uh, similarly the campus, and we used to run through the lot of exercise, uh, the basic, the criteria of what we make, okay, every student should have some sudden GPA scores in their examination. Sit, 
standards we made because we don't want to look at the below standard students okay the benchmark is clear okay yes organizations look at the fundamentals of basic okay, that is basic discipline students should have okay i wanted to gain some gpa to get into my own field okay to get into so how gpa will come unless until we thought of putting your efforts a uh, basic discipline a uh, uh, basic skill set not improving will not get the any gpa so first fundamentals focus on your studies understand grasp the and gain the knowledge what is this subject okay where i am heading first basic set and the gpa the next step how an organization looking back okay let's say infosys tcs wipro or something a global logic or some thought process uh, thought works any company having a different uh, the requirements okay let's say i'm applying in thought process global okay what is this company what is the nature of the business what are they targeting customers how they are making the revenue if you rethinking in that reverse chronological order yes if, if i choose in this career will i be get an a job in global logic or not that is the first step you have to make a checklist yes then you apply a job attend an interview you definitely will crack the interview okay thanks i think you asked two questions uh, what is the value proposition uh, second uh, is it worth to uh, sign a bond right uh, so i have answered the first question right uh, most of the times when we do engineering our focus is on understanding the house of it let's say you take uh, linear regression right uh, i think i just want to uh, give an example which uh, is close to you uh, in the first year you would have studied about linear regression so where do you use uh, i think we would have spent lot of time understanding the details of how linear regression works but did we any time think where is this used maybe we get uh, we we go to an extent where we know that maybe it is used for predictions right but where are we using this prediction algorithms the wise of it where's of it i think most of the time we don't really spend uh, significant amount of time so what i urge uh, you uh, is when you are studying you also practically look at look at where the, the the concepts that you are learning where are you learning why are you learning because once you go to corporate world you need to apply them uh, for creating value so when i say value uh, customer should be willing to pay for what you deliver right uh, and you have to deliver at a cost way low uh, below what customer is willing to pay for so that you get those profits right so the corporates work that way and also if you are corporate is like uh, if you are a company who is listed people look at getting year on year profits there is a huge pressure on getting profits so what it means is you need to start articulating the value and if you have to articulate the value you need to understand uh, why you are doing what you are doing uh, i think more foc uh, instead of focusing on hows we need to start focusing on whys and whats right uh, that's when i think it would be easy for you when you enter uh, uh, companies uh, when you start working you should be able to uh, start articulating value and it becomes easier for you uh, and the second and uh, also when you apply these concepts right or when you do something in your projects you need to explain how that project is going to deliver value right like meaning the customer should be able to pay more you need to understand who the customers are for what you are building right Uh, and then you need to also understand uh, how much they are willing to pay and how much does it cost for you does it really create benefit at the end of the day right that's one thing that you need to also start thinking from now uh, uh, unfortunately what happens is uh, in the last 20 years uh, i think we were predominantly a offshore development centers it was more seen as a uh, offshore development center where 
we deliver, but we are not close to business. Most of the business is in North America's Europe. Uh, there are most of the business folks are sitting out there, and they give requirements to folks here. And the focus has been more on engineering than really understanding the business. But now things are changing. Uh, we are uh, we are becoming more. Uh, I think we are leading the engineering teams. And also, we are getting to close. We are getting close to business. Uh, so this is increasing, and that's where I think uh, now. Even if you see the salaries have gone up in India, so what it means is people expect you to really deliver value, not uh, just uh, not order takers, right? We are no, we are no more order takers, but we need to really create, start creating value. Uh, the second thing is, should we sign bond, right? Like when we enter. Uh, an organization. Uh, I think companies invest you on uh, in, invest on you a lot, right? They expect you to generate that value. They, when they invest on you, they look at return on investment, right? Uh, and uh, you need to, and that's why they actually ask for uh, uh, signing up a bond. If you think that the kind of job is very strategic to your uh, career goals, I would say sign up for uh, sign up for the bond. And there are companies who invest on training, right? Like uh, thought, companies like ThoughtWorks. Uh, we have something called uh, ThoughtWorks Unis University, where uh, freshers spend like one one and a half month uh, learning different engineering practices. Uh, what are the best practices in IT development? What are the imp uh, best practices for delivery? Uh, all of that is taught in that one and one one and a half month. And then you have internship where. People spend significant of a significant amount of time uh, helping you learn like how to execute a project. After all that investment, uh, people expect that you deliver, right? So if really consulting is your passion and you want to go in that line, I think it's worth uh, having like spending uh, or like signing up for a bond for a brief amount of time. I don't see that as a problem. Before I actually ask multiple questions, I think if any one of you are really uh, looking to get some insights from the panel, uh, please do feel free to ask questions. So that uh, at the end of the session, I may ask a couple of questions which are in general and generic to everybody. But if you have any specific questions, you can just raise your hand and our volunteer will reach you out. I'll just make a note of uh, everyone's roll number in my department and I'll make sure I will not answer any of your queries when you reach out to me in your third year or fourth year. Unless you will have questions now, it's highly difficult. Yeah, please. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, so we've been hearing about Devon AI recently. Do you know about it? Like, so it's like a AI software model. How is it different from what a human software engineer can do, and what can we do? Like, what some things it can do and we can't do. How can we overcome that drawback? Great question. Uh, there are. So Devin is AI assisted software engineer. There, uh, there is also there are also multiple open source tools that have come after Devin. You would have heard about Devika. Now we are hearing about Devika, which is an open source tool, which is also a similar AI assisted uh, software tool. I think this is a reality, right? You would have software copilots going forward. So when you write software earlier, you need to find information. So there is a process, right? If you have to write, if you have to do development, there was an analysis that done where software de developers typically spend only 31% of the time in coding. Rest 69% of the time, 
they spend time in meetings, aligning with stakeholders, finding information. Finding information is like a very critical component of the 71%. Now tools like Copilot and Devin, what they are doing for you is simplifying that process. And Devin goes one step ahead, it also tries to scan your code, tries to fix the problems, right? You say that, okay, you find any bugs, this is the issue that uh, a QA has reported, can you go and fix this bug? Then uh, Devin goes and scans your code, looks at your patterns and see if you have missed any exceptions. It goes and adds an exception handler. It first lists down the steps, right? What is it going to do? It, say, it, goes, it says, I'm going to scan the code, I'm going to see where this business logic is, then I'll see all the cases and if there are any missing cases or exceptions not handled, I'll like add exceptions. You say, yeah, go ahead. Then it goes and fixes, right? And I think it's going to become more sophisticated, uh, right? So the critical thing, the one, the, point, the question that you asked, right? Like how can we differentiate as human beings, right? I think we need to make choices, right? Uh, while AI can assist you in fixing bugs, making some choices, by making some suggestions, it is up to you to make those decisions because AI, uh, these co-pilots and uh, Devin, what they do is they actually look at the past data and then give you some recommendations, right? But you know the business context well. As a software engineer, you know the requirements well. Uh, you know the business context well. For example, there might be a requirement where you need to uh, build an application which can scale for millions of users, right? And Devin does not know that context. Devin would give you a code assuming that it works for one user, right? Like if you have to make it like work for millions of users, that's when you need to think about the non-functional requirements, cross-functional requirements, and give those instructions to Devin. While you still can rely on Devin, you are the person who is, who is like doing the pilot piloting, right? It's just a co-pilot. You need to anchor the architecture, architectural decisions. So that's why your role would be key going forward. And that's why decision making is one of the important skills that you need to have. Uh, and these tools definitely will ease your software development process. Sir, another question. Is AI a threat for our jobs? So it's threat and also an opportunity. That's how I look at it. So it's a threat in a way because if you really look at the business operations today, there is a lot of scope for in improving the business operations efficiency to AI. So what it means is you, list, you need less of uh, uh, people uh, to do the same activity, right? Because AI solves some of the problems. If you really see BPO industry, earlier you used to have a call center, you call them, you need to, if you have any issue, you need to have you need to call customer support. But now chatbots have replaced the customer support. Only if chatbot cannot solve the problem, that's when a human comes into picture. So what it means is 80% of the uh, human resources, they are like uh, not needed anymore. But the uh, opportunity is you can do a lot of things using AI, right? Like if you see, today you can generate PowerPoints using AI. You give instructions saying that I want to create a PPT uh, for one of my client who is in healthcare industry, uh, wants to solve this problem, it creates a deck for you, right? Typically it would have been uh, done, uh, or you would have taken weeks to create that presentation, now you are able to do it fast, right? So what it means is that it's an uh, opportunity for you to go faster uh, to market. right? Uh, you can generate more revenues, and what it means is you can hire more people to drive your operations further. So it creates new opportunities. Uh, there, is, there, is, there are research opportunities and also AI application, right? Today we are talking about fine-tuning uh, language learning models. Uh, uh, if you take chat GPT, you have, let's say, Anurag University has a uh, wealth of knowledge. You embed that knowledge to chat GPT and you start asking questions about Anurag University, it will give you answers, right? So what it means is it's you have a lot of scope to build AI solutions. That, that's a, a place for opportunity. So you would get more jobs and some of the jobs which are like manual would go away. You need to be more smart now. Uh, with the permission of Chair, I would like to add one point. So please correct me uh, because uh, 
it is of course a threat if they start use misusing it and if they don't understand because uh, when i look at them uh, as far as cv preparation or generation is concerned though it is taught in the subject though we we'll ask them to prepare their uh, you know resume uh, in the last minute they will use lot of ai tools uh, maybe canva or else resume builder or something or the other they will use and uh, they will just uh, dump it in a image format or else in a pdf format and they don't understand they need to have some understanding about uh, editing altering the cv for different profiles having multiple copies for their you know uh, improvement when they have to add their achievements they need to add their uh, you know hackathon related or certification related achievements in it but still they are not in a position to use that and when we have a beautiful software like microsoft office uh, uh, which is very strong stronger than anything they will use wps office and uh, it is just a small application uh, they will use it and they will dump the code in the uh, and they will get rejected by the companies also sometimes see unless you will understand the applications latest applications which you have not read studied okay if you start using it it will be a threat for you you may have to face the consequences this is what my understanding of even cyber security uh, unless you know about uh, uh, of course you will understand a workshop on ethical hacking and you will try to do uh, hacking you know our own website and you will not be in a position to directly rela in relationship with it but you have to know if somebody else is also tracking and using your email account and trying to hack the account there will you also should have a backup plan of using blockchain isn't it or not you should break the chain on security related things unless you will have both the knowledge you, you can't directly enter into uh, implementation or uh, you know use of it is what my uh, you know understanding about uh, com new uh, uh, you know areas of ai or cyber security or blockchain or even cloud Okay, try to understand and manage your own personal space. After that, you just to get into such kind of thing is what my, uh, you know, suggestion to everybody sitting here. Thank you so much. There is a term for this. It's called responsible AI. Uh, so responsible AI talks about what all Madam was saying. Uh, while AI is good. Uh, there are challenges adopting AI. Like you see deep fakes, you see uh, cyber security threats because today there are uh, 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 hackers who use AI algorithms to get into your systems, to find patterns, to understand vulnerabilities and get through your systems and hack your systems. Uh, there are also privacy breaches. Uh, they, uh, the content is being misutilized and you see people voices being misused right so i think there should be a governance around how ai can be used across organization like or institutions like anurag and I, I think that's where the governance models re are really important uh, and without responsible ai i think this world is going to be a very uh, dangerous place thanks for pointing that out Okay, I just want everybody to understand uh, the threat that we have been always been talking about. Uh, interestingly, my grandfather was in politics and uh, whenever I go to his house, there's this big picture of himself where he's doing a dharna in Mumbai when the first IBM computer was coming into India. He was like, no, don't bring computers into India because it's going to create a job loss. Because back then what they thought is bringing computers to India, computers back then were thought some a machine which can do humans work a little faster uh, and therefore some human beings were replaced with those IBM computers which can calculate faster which can do something faster so uh, the the world then was of a thought that if these computers somehow make it to India a lot of Indians are going to lose jobs and uh, if you actually look into the history it the, one of the good things that happened with India is those computers actually came in right and today India is considered as one of the technological hubs 
where we provide technological solutions and lakhs and lakhs and lakhs of jobs got created because computers came into India. Today, again, we're at a juncture where we are saying, these are technologies, we don't want to use it, we don't want to bring it, uh, please make sure we are going to lose jobs, that fear is again in. Also, let me tell you, uh, I'm sure most of you have used ATM machines before COVID, right? Uh, did you know that before ATM machines were invented, people had a job called teller in a bank, right? The job of this person was to take money, count, put it back in the bank, take money, count and give it back. And they used to make mistakes because humans can make mistakes. And somebody invented a teller machine, an automated teller machine, which can do this work automatically. What happened? A lot of people who had the skill of, uh, say, counting money lost their jobs. Of course, even now, some skills are going to lose jobs. Today, a skill of counting money is no more relevant. Today, a skill of remembering the code is no more relevant. Because if you start coding, the computer is going to tell you the ne next five pieces of code by yourself. But what will become relevant is something else, some other skill, which the technology is now creating a problem with. So do understand this. What happened with ATM machines? When ATM machines came, all tellers lost jobs, but banks realized that it's easier to maintain a bank. So they kept another bank, they kept another bank, they kept another bank. All these banks did not require tellers, but required managers, right? Required salesmen, required marketing people. So in fact, ATM machines have created more jobs, just that it killed off the job of a teller, right? So do understand with the new advent of new technologies, a certain processes or a certain skills will become redundant, irrelevant, but the new set of skills which are going to become more important. My father is a scientist and he tells me a story that uh, when he was doing his research, uh, he had to travel all the way to Mumbai to just refer to a book because that book was in a particular library. So he took a train, traveled one day, looked at the book, took his notes, came back. So his referencing a book was four days of activity. When I was studying in college, all I have to do is probably go to a, uh, so go to, so I didn't have a laptop at home. I have to go to some browsing center to figure out that that is a four hour activity for me. Today, if you want to research something, Trust me, you can pull something, a device out of your hand and you can easily figure out. Tomorrow is going to be a space where you don't have to probably pull a device. The moment the thought appears in your brain, there is going to be a system which is going to give you an answer. Right? But yet, what you do with the technology, how you use the technology, how you, so today I can't say that I'm, I'll go to Mumbai if I want to figure out. That means that you are outdated. So all I'm saying is AI is a threat if you don't use AI. Uh, one point to add, actually, uh, when you're talking about uh, job losses, even I have seen, we all might, uh, you know, recollect our uh, old thoughts. During 2000, 2001, when uh, this banking has been convert completely converted into automation, when uh, computer machines are introduced into banks, most of the seniors are asked to leave by taking voluntary retirement. Then people started it as one of the threat. And uh, uh, earlier we have seen typewriting machines. We also went and practiced our uh, basic typing skills in sitting in the you know uh, typing centers. But all those stenographers, typewriters, and all these jobs have vanished. I also feel like this generation is at crossroads now, and they're unsure about which road that they need to take. But definitely, yeah, AI is. Uh, as you rightly pointed out, sir, AI is definitely going to uh, help them in terms of building their career rather than, you know, uh, but the only thing is they should be a little conscious about where and how and uh, exactly uh, what purpose that they are using might be uh, the better uh, way of or approach that they have to adopt themselves is what I personally feel. Thank you. We talk about Agile, right? I think you would have heard about Agile. Uh, Agile in this context is about being able to understand the market changes and able to adapt to those changes, right? I think uh, while we talk about Agile in the context of software delivery, it actually really applies at, a, a con at an organization level, at market level, right? 
So as business conditions, macroeconomic conditions change, there are new requirements, as uh, uh, Nivas was pointing out. There will be re new challenges, new requirements, and agility is about adapting to those conditions, right? If you stick to old ways of working, then you are not agile. I think we need to understand the concept or the, the, uh, uh, the spirit of agile, right? Uh, that's what I meant to say. Hello. So uh, I have two parts of the same question. Uh, Nivas sir, I want to answer, give a student's perspective on when you say why students are not going for springboard. I see uh, the environment of a classroom is very similar to of a springboard uh, because we have we have practiced uh, design thing from the same course. Uh, in a classroom, when you say we have to add value in the corporate world after coming out of college, uh, how are we going to train ourselves to add value in the college life itself is the first question because our own classrooms are not equipped to ask, ask questions or re-question the establishment because there's no uh, availability of internet. When, when of course, Sir has, was just talking about RNN and CNN technologies, I was just Googling it uh, on my phone. And we are taught in this whole uh, environment of undergraduate education is that not to interrupt the speaker or not to ask questions. So when we don't practice it here, how can we reciprocate or how can we build that attitude? That goes just beyond classroom, even because most of our day is filled with uh, attending lectures. And off the lecture period, we do not get opportunities to network. And as ma'am said, we are, most of the learning is peer learning. When we don't interact with people and we don't discuss the questions among ourselves before us asking teacher, uh, there's a hypocrisy being built up, sir, because when we attend such lectures, we have a lot of questions and our mind is you know, just going multiple directions. And again, when we go tomorrow and come to class, it's again shut down. Because we don't have who to ask questions. And is it right to ask questions? Is it right to use phone? This, uh, this is one thing. Because this connects to my second question of how much is discipline mattered in corporate hiring? Because uh, not discipline, when I say, uh, I talk about entrepreneurship mindset. Because when people who want to pursue entrepreneurship will take mostly one or two years gap after uh, bit, after our, our undergraduation. Exceptional people take before graduation, so after 11, 12th or something. Lot of big companies like BlackRock or JP Morgan are not giving any opportunities for people like us or entrepreneurs who have a gap in their academic calendar. So, uh, how, how, like, do you, like, felicitate or do you appreciate that gap and do you appreciate that, oh, this guy has done something more other than academics at the cost? Uh, actually, for all these uh, things, NEP is coming up in India, uh, national education policy, uh, wherein these kind of changes, maybe gap also appreciated because whenever you wanted to withdraw your course that can be withdrawn, but not now immediately. Maybe it is going to be applicable for the uh, next generation, uh, you know, kids, maybe from uh, the, the students who are in third or sixth standard, they may get advantage of it. Because now we are in a uh, disciplined environment, wherein uh, we, we have, uh, have to be uh, in certain limitations because we are bounded with certain rules and regulations. And uh, when a company comes, if they will ask not more than one academic year gap in between 10th and graduation or intermediate or intermediate and graduation, I cannot force a company uh, uh, to accept your profile or someone else's profile having two years or three years or multiple years of uh, gap in the education. It's not possible as far as job is concerned. But as you are rightly pointing out about entrepreneurial mindset, it is your wish and will. You can go any extent possible and you can always come back, okay? Most of the, uh, you know, startups, if you have uh, a right thought process in line with their business model, they won't look at what exactly, like what kind of gap that exists in between your academic calendar or anything. They won't look at it. Okay, but as a fresher, I personally feel uh, it, we should follow the basic norms that are set by the companies because they will always visit the university only to take, okay? When they are giving and taking the students, I should not have any demanding approach. I should positively help them 
and help the students also. Okay, this is what the mindset that we will have. About the discipline, uh, because I cannot, because you know very well about the academic discipline, but corporate discipline, they will have their own challenges in handling lacks of employees in their organization. Uh, I can't talk more about it because it is, it is always good to hear from the uh, panelists. Thank you so much. No, I think uh, one of the points was about uh, gap years. If you do something, uh, are the corporates willing to accept that gap? I think that that is uh, being accepted nowadays. The market scenario is quite changing. Yeah, earlier, maybe 15 years back, 20 years back, it was looked at as a taboo. But uh, now, if there are gap years, there is justification. See, gap need not be just because of your entrepreneurship venture. Gap can be because of personal reasons, family emergencies, or whatever. Right? So I think if there's a proper justification, many companies are accepting that uh, gap. Now, uh, when it comes to discipline, right? Uh, I don't know in what context uh, you're asking, but uh, let's look at it like this. How many of you uh, uh, know uh, Sachin Tendulkar? Everybody, right? Do you think he just goes to match without any practice? In spite of he being one of the greatest cricketers of the world, he will still go for practice every day. Right? This morning when I woke up, I was just browsing uh, internet on my mobile. Somebody posted a story about uh, Muttai Murlidharan. I think he's number one uh, wicket taker. I think 700 plus wickets. Nobody has broken that record till date. So a junior cricketer was writing about that story. In spite of that record, he still went for practice every day. Right? So that's the discipline. It's not about practice. Yeah, practice is important. But that's the discipline. No, th there is. There is no replacement for discipline. Even uh, Naran Murthy has discipline. That's because Infosys is built. Every person who is successful, there is certain discipline. But yeah, distractions, it's very easy to get distracted. Even for us, even for me, everybody. It's a, it's a human nature. It's very easy to get distracted. But as long as we realize that you know we are getting distracted and we just come back on track, uh, I think that's, uh, that's OK. Did I answer or uh, you a have? Small point I would want to answer. So when I say discipline, I, I was asking, I was telling about, you know, controlling uh, with not using mobile phones. When I say, uh, when I sir said about design thinking, our design thinking whole curriculum is in one classroom, 70 people. We shouldn't talk when presentation is happening. We shouldn't ask questions. So for, we consider that as discipline, just to nod our heads, write notes, not ask questions. So having such, dis I'm, not, I'm not saying discipline in general, having such uh, model of discipline, how can we add value? How can we do okay, B-problems for us? This is my question. I'll probably pick that up. So, uh, interestingly, uh, see, uh, I'm going to talk a bit about culture itself, right? So, uh, what happens mostly in Indian homes is when a small child is running around, we look at the child and say, keep quiet, don't be standards of speaking. So, right from childhood, we were taught that silence is a sign of respect. We somehow believe that if you're silent, you're showing respect. And recently, we had a German client in Infosys who uh, came not all the big way from Germany. He wanted to speak to a few youngsters who uh, went to colleges and uh, joined Infosys. And uh, he blocked one hour of their time. So he came to a stage like this, spoke for 20 minutes. And uh, the reason he blocked extra was because he was expecting questions. No questions came in. And uh, the client was a little confused as to why nobody's asking questions. We had to go and silently whisper in his ear, they're not, uh, say, speaking because they're respecting you, right? Be because that's a kind of a mindset which we somehow uh, put up in the fresh, uh, say, youngsters today. That's, uh, but that's not how industry looks at it. Industry looks at it as uh, totally different. At industry, we expect you to speak. In industry, we do conduct sessions about how to ensure that you speak up, how to ensure that you talk to others. In fact. One thing about Infosys is once you go to Infosys, there's nothing called, we don't have suffixes and prefixes. There's nothing called Nivas Sir, Nivas G, Mr. Nivas. Nobody calls us that way. And everybody calls us with the first name because that's what we got used to. Tomorrow if Murthy is in the campus, we'll call him Murthy. We don't call him Murthy Sir or something like that. Even the present CEO Salil, when he's in the campus, we call him Salil, right? Because we want to bring in that equality of space where anybody can speak to everybody but also to understand that uh, does that mean that we do not have discipline? We do uh, have a discipline. And we do understand that at times, as per the context is concerned, where uh, a group of people, it's, it's a two-hour workshop or a two-hour session, 
in which a four or five panel members are invited, which means that all 200 people cannot have a conversation. Uh, so it is a basic understanding uh, of a discipline that, okay, there is a process that is being followed. Let's follow the process. There's going to come a time where I can ask questions. So even if you have 1,000 questions, I don't think it's logically possible for you to ask 1,000 questions in a two-hour uh, space. So because if you ask five questions, then somebody else is not asking a few questions. So it's basic understanding and basic common sense uh, about how uh, we understand discipline and how we understand equality and how we understand how a certain process can be completed in the most optimal manner. And uh, also to understand it's impossible that everybody is happy with a certain process. Everybody can be uh, said, wow, this is a great way that we have, we have done this. There will be some results. But we are looking at optimization, right? So when it's optimization, some results are completely okay. And if that is indiscipline, if you want to, if you want to define it as indiscipline, then the probably that that is what it is. And it's okay. So I think culture is a big topic, uh, and uh, if you really want to classify culture as right. Different types of cultures. There is a culture of control. There is a culture of competition. There is a culture of collaboration, and there is a culture of cultivation. Right? So these are the four types of cultures you have, and the reason why there is a culture, why one culture is more prevalent than other in a particular setting, is because of the nature of the people. Right. So if people don't have really a clear purpose, that's where culture of control would kick in, right? Uh, and if there is a, a, uh, a culture of people having, like, a, a want to achieve, they have some goals, but they want to achieve themselves, right? They don't want to collaborate with others. They look at others as competition to them. That's the culture of competition, right? That's where you, your achievements are more valued, right? Uh, in culture of collaboration, your interpersonal relationships, these are more valued. In a culture of cultivation, what is the purpose of life, right? Like those kind of like self-realization kind of questions kick in, right? So I think when a particular culture of control, when a, when a particular culture exists, we really need to question ourselves why we have this culture, right? If the culture of control you see is more prevalent, that's when we need to be more self-disciplined. That's when that culture goes away and you start interacting with people, that's when you transition from culture of control to culture of collaboration. Right? It's not about individuals, it's about collective. Uh, to add on this uh, panel, and, uh, so governance is a place, uh, the major role here. Uh, student have his governance, family has a governance, corporates have a governance, universities have a governance. Okay, let me put it in that way. Uh, so organization looks, uh, so you've seen the job ad, right? Okay, the requirements, requirement. What basically the job board having the requirements, can you name at least two, three parameters? So we look into the candidate, okay? So they mentioned, the, if you job board mentioned five typical skill set we are looking out, out of five skill set, only one skill set which will be trained in companies, remaining all four in trained in universities, schools, remember four, if you overall five parameter skill set, out of only technical only, the companies will give you training, but rest all will be fundamentally the university reviews. Okay. So be it uh, your, uh, the organizing skills, uh, behavioral skills, communication skills, empathy, or could be anything, which is Right from your fundamental, right from schooling to discipline. Yes, of course. We know uh, that during the schooling days, uh, that is, we used to uh, give an information saying that today I'm taking an absent, okay? You have to write a leave letter, uh, you have to inform the uh, teacher through in a different mode. The discipline which is already taught by the school, uh, already the discipline started in the school, okay? We must have follow some governance, okay, during the student life, okay, I have to go to uh, school at the right time, I have to, to reach out the school, I have to wake up at right time, to have a break, having uh, the, uh, the fresher, uh, 
the brushing of the uh, the previous classroom sessions, making our the hand homework or classwork, then you have to go to the school. Okay, so that shows the discipline. So discipline is already your thought. No company is give you uh, the prospect or giving the orientation about you have to be like this, you have to be this, you have to be this. Basics you already done. So of course, universities, colleges, schools, everybody thought the major skill set. If you look at the finger five fingers, one finger can be enterprise can give it, organization give the orientation. The remaining four carries from the you know, from the chain on to schooling, schooling to the college. So this is. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Nitish, and I have a small doubt that recently, as you said, the the basic level of any company will be programmers. For MNCs or corporates, will be programmers. And if we go to the next level, you said we find something else to uh, in the employees to hold in that uh, certain positions. And even we see uh, recently, Mr. Narayana Muthi said that 70 hours a week uh, would be sufficient for the Indians to be working. And here we see, why don't we see the Infosys hiring the UPSC aspirants who spend their uh, whole day, uh, approximately 15 hours a day, 12 hours a day in the preparation. Why don't we see the if the same efforts will be put in the growth of company or any MNCs and they, it will be a massive growth because we want to see the where other thought ends, our the thought should be begin from there. And even uh, it connecting to the another question of mine, when every company we see geo, uh, we see corporate social responsibility wing in any corporate uh, which uh, has more turnover than thousand crores. And why don't we see a, a geopolitical wing? Be, because even a small stroke of geopolitics may be a, it may impact on the shares of the company. That's what I want. Okay, that's a long question. So again, uh, <laughs> one of the things that we definitely want is uh, looking at structuring the question. So I'll only uh, answer the aspect where he mentioned about uh, Murthy's statement about 70 hours a uh, week, and then uh, the rest of the questions I'm sure others will answer. Uh, this is basically a difference between the real culture which students have today to the uh, YouTube culture that we came from. So how many of you have actually seen the entire interview of Murthy? Uh, and what does the context? So one person has seen the entire uh, YouTube video. And if you can think about the space in which Murthy was mentioning 70 hours. Now let's, let's understand uh, Narayan Murthy for a moment. He's the person who started a company like Infosys. Imagine that, right? So right now, close to more than 3 lakh, 3.5 lakh employees work in a company uh, and he started this 40 years back and pretty sure he and his colleagues when he started a company they would have spent that much time right let me ask you one question to you right now if you today want to start your own company you want to start your own entrepreneurship journey and you want to start your company how many hours do you expect that you're going to spend do you think you can spend uh, say uh, four hours a day and somehow the company is going to start definitely no right you are probably going to spend more than 70 hours if the company is yours so all Murthy was talking about is if today's youngsters are looking for success they have to put in as much commitment as possible and that's what he meant but somehow for social uh, what social media did is they took a small fragment a small snippet of a small sentence that he used where he put a practical and then probably, uh, trust me, Murthy would have spent more than 70 hours during his starting of his career to create a company like this. And if you want to create an Infosys of tomorrow, I'm sure you will be spending 70 hours uh, or maybe 80 hours or maybe 90 hours. But, but if you want to start, if, if you're working in Infosys, uh, it's more about adding that value to ensure that you're resolving or the six month goal or the three month goal that you get, you achieve that goal depending upon the intellect that you have and how fast can you solve problems. We are not focusing on the number of hours, but you are focusing on the value that you are adding to the company. And sometimes as a fresher, when you start off, maybe you have to spend a little more to make sense of uh, what the project is about and all that. And slowly and slowly, as you gain some form of experience, I do not think you are going to spend that much time. Rather, you are going to now uh, depend upon your, uh, say, uh, intellect uh, to solve problems, which 
connects me to that question, can I hire people just because they're spending, uh, say, 15, 20 hours? No, that is not how you hire people, right? So you have to hire people based on a certain set of competencies that we think are going to be useful uh, for Infosys. And that is never going to be uh, the number of hours that you can be awake. Think about it. Most of you are awake on Instagram the entire night. So is that a criteria for you to uh, hire for night shifts? Definitely no, right? So, uh, so that is, please don't mix these two things together. Do not get emotional about uh, what social media or media in general is making uh, things popular. See, media usually functions on ensuring that they pick up the most interesting snippets and put it in front of you. And if that snippet is interesting for you, go and do a little more research as to what this entire snippet is about. Don't believe in the stories that are uh, being being just set, just, just put over there, right? So those are my two uh, thoughts about uh, what you asked about the 70 hour week, but I'm sure uh, the rest of the question will be answered. In, in their words, I think it is thumbnail talent, right? And also look at it from the lens of aspiration, not from the lens of expectation, right? So if you have the subject, 70 hours is good. But if you are an observer, maybe it's like someone is imposing on someone, right? Like you definitely as an aspirant, you want to work hard, right? From that lens, that looks very positive. But if you see that from the lens of an employer and you being an employee, it looks like an expectation set on you, imposed on you, right? So I would suggest look at it from the lens of aspiration. And just to let you know, none of us are pay, getting paid by our company for coming on a Saturday over here. We are happily working extra hours because we love the companies that for which we work. So I want, what I want to mean that means here we see the number of the amount of effort by is uh, applying by the employee by the certain employee, the amount of effort he is giving to the company, not the basis he is, no, what is the skill set, what is the mindset. If he try to learn the subject, means he is uh, already preparing the basis and the foundation, the communication skills, whatever the MNCs expect, is already pre-initialized. Uh, as a CSE student, we can say pre-installed. Here the basis will be pre-installed. Whatever he wants to learn more is to uh, nothing but the technical knowledge. He, by where if he put that effort in the basis of an MNC, then he can even excel the uh, the skill or the work which is uh, given to him. The, it, uh, that didn't mean that it's not a it's a wrong thing for spending 70 hours being awake. But there is a difference being awake for uh, by watching a mobile. But there is a being. Uh, even uh, we see the difference being awake for uh, growth of our country, for putting our efforts and uh, our efforts in the growth of a country, even uh, becoming a civil service. So if I understand your question right, so you're saying if I have to really spend 70 hours, why don't I spend those 70 hours for the benefit of the country instead of spending it for a company? Is that your question? Did I get you right? Means I didn't mean that, sir. Means he is putting the efforts for the country. And here, if he didn't got any chance for, from the government, he can even divert for his efforts for the company. Even we can see the company will be growth in the process. No, I think his, his question is uh, civil service aspirants. They spend like 70 hours a week to crack the civil service exam. But if they don't end up doing that, looking at their commitment, of you know spending that many hours, why don't you look that as a quality and hire? Exactly. Because he's willing to do that. Uh, civil services, like you know, serving the country. So definitely, that's an asset uh, to a company. Is that right? Honestly, I don't have an answer for this one. <laughs> okay. So, uh, see, uh, somebody who's aspiring in a completely different uh, space. I can't go there, put a gun to his head and say, no, come here. I can't do that. But if that person is applying here in my company, I'll definitely go through my process. And if it happens so that I saw all the basic requirements, I'm not questioning. But I don't want to put that as a criteria. Because people who are going for that has a completely different aspiration, a completely different path. What you are asking is, why don't you hire them here? I don't want to do that every day. I'm sure, see, 
uh, I'll, I'll ask you a question over here. Say you go to MGPS bus stand and you're going to, you want to go to Goa. There's a bus which says Goa. And somebody is put, putting a hand and say, come, anyway you want, want to go to seashore, let's go to Pondicherry. Right? Anyway you want to go to seashore, right? Right? So that's not how this functions. I think somewhere in your question, you, you felt just because it's a seashore, just because people are spending that much time, why don't you do this as well? I think even you wouldn't want to go to Pondicherry because your aspiration is to go to Goa. Right? I can't do that as a company. I can't uh, say, say pull people out. I can't do that. Right? I, I don't think that's the right thing to do. See, being a teacher, I will also uh, always aim that like uh, the amount of time now, nowadays this generation is spending on social media, if that can be spent on uh, you know their uh, learnings, it will definitely add value to them. See, there is nothing wrong in uh, having some expectation from the next generation, right? See, that 8 hours of 888 eight, eight is what I divide it into, that 8 hours of time which most of the students are wasting, if that can be converted into your learnings, that will definitely yield better results because earlier when we are uh, in your uh, place, uh, we used to work a lot because everyone used to prepare a lot, study a lot, you know, because we never used to get uh, the marks as we expect. So definitely we have to prepare, we used to prepare. But now what happens, you are all getting, everybody started giving it to you, either it is money or it is marks, you are getting it, you are in receiving end. So what is happening, you are not paying much attention, no one is preparing. If someone prepares, definitely you will win. Okay, there is, uh, market is less of competition nowadays is what I feel. I always expect if students can prepare for 8 hours, they will definitely win in the race. But how, uh, how you take it is, you know, you are uh, understanding about, uh, you know, time management. I cannot come and always explain that you have to spend it because somebody else is pointing out discipline. It is not about controlling or discipline. It is about, uh, uh, you know, uh, distracting from actual learning path that uh, any teacher will not expect from the student, okay? This is not about uh, controlling, this is not about discipline. It is about, I don't want my student to distract from the actual learnings that, is, that are happening in the classroom environment, okay? We should always look at it in a positive, uh, you know, side. That is my suggestion to everybody. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Anything you want to say? Yeah. Because uh, is different makes the difference. Correct, correct. Right. As you said, uh, even a security guard also cracked the civil services. You see, by googling the YouTube, watching YouTube, uh, if you go back the history, uh, even security guard also cracked the civil service. But here only the perception makes a difference. Uh, uh, one last question as we have, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> because you might have seen a lot of freshers uh, who might have joined in your career, maybe not in exactly where you are now currently, but you might have seen a fresher joining in a company and making their career out and reaching out to the top positions. Uh, and uh, do you have any stories of such, if you can add value to them? Maybe those stories will inspire uh, the current generation and help our students to get inspiration to stick on to, you know, maybe one or two companies, not more than that, because nowadays, uh, uh, student, uh, you know, aspire to change, okay, instead of they bring change in themselves, they always wanted to change the place, change the workplace, you know, something like that is going on in their mind around. So can you please help us in sharing some stories, freshers, it may be you or it may be anyone else who joined as a fresher and built their career in that particular company and how many levels will be there, how far they can 
excel in their career you know this can be our last uh, discussion questions thank you i think uh, not in uh, my uh, not in my teams or somebody i know but uh, if you look at all this uh, new age uh, ceos that we hear right i think most recent is uh, Vipro CEO Srinivas uh, Pailia, uh, he is announced as CEO. If I look at his career, I think he joined there as a fresher, and he grew up to the role of CEO. Similarly, the many success stories that you can find in the recent times, where you know somebody joined as a fresher in the company. If I am not wrong, even uh, TCS uh, Chandrasekhar also joined as a fresher, and uh, he grew up to the ranks of uh, chairman of the board. so that way you will see uh, these are the two i think examples that i instantly remember when we say somebody joining as a fresher and you know growing to the top of the organization and in our uh, early, my past experience current experience we took freshers okay so the uh, the leadership team uh, all organization talks about leadership team if you talk about leadership team there is a 15% of pool who was grown from the management trainees or engineer trainees they go, gone into the leadership team the ladder because 15% of the pool so i'm seen so recently uh, there is a i to uh, ramdev baba engineering college nagpur i had went for the campus signings i the electronics background students i was interviewing hope you know level 1 level 2 jam sessions everything okay finally came up to me as hr round they have seen the emotional intelligence emotional uh, quotients in the one of the student okay i met one uh, female she is literally i am asking to draw a transformer and give a justification of a negative dc positive dc basically wanted capacitor how a negative capacitor or positive capacitor plays in lc i given a paper ask her to draw okay since she is a final year of the electronics student and also i have asked one element question what is how do you do you know nascent oxygen can you write on the paper she literally started crying tears in her i seen her okay cool down cool down okay so but she have was already three rounds she was excel because uh, during the first level second level while observing so i given her a chance okay i given her a chance okay what i did i have asked her to okay let me try i have a one project okay you had to come to hyderabad she all the way she was from north who was oh, studying in nagpur i have given opportunity her come and join an organization i'll give you 10 days time so i'll give you a fantastic project if you want to just do so 10 days time i was given an assignment okay there was a scattered uh, warehouse a uh, manufacturing process so scattered warehouse uh, we were uh, implementing a ws wms a warehouse management uh, the software so i have given an our project okay scattered process okay so she absolutely brought up in a very good project okay and finally she became the one point of contact in an organization to go for the live wms process without her help with with her help now the company the what we are taking cycle time the cycle time got reduced to Eight minutes in the process. How are they? So a common woman uh, came up the project and helped her uh, the, in the in terms of transforming in the WMS process. The uh, cycle time has got reduced. She awarded many more awards in the company. The first six months are uh, the we intended to give a special increment, special award, and promotion also we given her. so we have a stories different stories in organizations i i want to answer this question slightly uh, in a different way uh, the question is whether we need to really stick to a company for long time or is it okay if we switch companies right maybe i rephrase this question in a different way i i myself have switched five companies and now i've been thoughtworks for almost 7 years 
hopefully i can talk about staying the benefits of staying in a company for a longer time now i, I hope i'm eligible now having spent <laughs> seven years in thoughtworks uh, I want to share my experience here, uh, spending seven years in ThoughtWorks. Uh, See, I think as you spend more time in an organization, you will un you will really establish good relationships with multiple teams in the organization. You would have you would have built that trust within the organization. You would have connects with leadership team. Uh, you would also understand the organization's objectives better. And you will really tie to organization vision and you will be married to that vision more as you spend long time in an organization. If you are like two weeks, let's say you spend two years in an organization, switch to another organization, it's all together a new set of people, new set of organization objectives and you need to make an impression. And every time your majority of the effort is spent to create an impression, then really creating an impact. So I think it's important that you stay for some time, understand uh, the organization better. If it really aligns with your objectives, if your aspirations are aligning to organization objectives, I think even if you get a better hike in a short term, I suggest, uh, at least my feeling is we need to really stay for some time, uh, uh, invest our efforts to me meet those objectives. And if you really have an aspiration to start your company your own startup that's a different thing uh, but I definitely I agree to that point that definitely there are advantages benefits of staying long uh, so uh, just looking at the date 20th uh, 20th of March which is almost uh, 15 years back so 15 years one month back I joined Infosys uh, as soon as I completed my triple electrical electronics engineering right so I joined as a fresher entered the gates of uh, Mysore campus uh, along with 650 others, right? So th that's the day uh, Mysore has opened its gates for training for 650 people who got placed in emphasis. Uh, at that moment in time, I did not realize that uh, uh, how uh, how an insignificant me who is a nobody in a 2 lakh 50, 60,000 employees back then uh, would be even be impactful or say would be able, able to create something for emphasis. Right, so and uh, so I think the picture, uh, my picture, the second one is picked from LinkedIn. I'm holding uh, uh, an award over there, which uh, just want to talk about it. So uh, Infosys every year uh, say celebrates something called Awards for Excellence. That's the award there, right? So uh, out of uh, four lakh employees it has, this award is hardly given to say a hundred or say 120 people, which is almost 0.0001% of people in Infosys. And uh, that uh, that award that you see is the eighth AFP that I'm holding in my hand. Right, so, uh, and that's, that's exactly what I'm talking about. It's not about how long you spend. It's not about, uh, say, uh, do you spend two, uh, two years, three years, four years, but have you made that time worthwhile for the company, right? The fact that I have constantly been ensuring that Infosys believes that I am adding value Infosys pays back in a way that right now I'm uh, heading the uh, education training and assessment uh, or uh, learning and development aspect in the Hyderabad campus, which is the largest campus of Infosys. Uh, almost 40,000 employees uh, are there and I'm responsible for their behavioral competencies. And if I'm able to achieve that in 15 years in a single company, uh, uh, the belief system that no, you have to leave a company to be successful is not actually true. Right. Uh, I don't think if I left Infosys uh, and uh, joined five other companies, I would have been uh, where I am today. Uh, but at the same time, it's a person to person scenario. Right. So I can give you a thousand examples where people stayed for 15 years, but not successful. I can also give you a thousand examples where people stayed and were successful. Also, similarly, people who left companies have been successful and also not been successful. Uh, but if there's a common thread I want to pull, people who have been successful have constantly added value uh, 
to the company for which they're working over an extended period of time. The extended period of time could be two to five years. And uh, people who have not been successful in the IT industry are people who c came to the company just for the purpose of existence, right? Uh, so, uh, and that is what you should be focusing on as to how much value am I adding in the stint that I'm having with that company. And naturally you can't add too much value in the first one, one and a half year because you're still uh, holding the ropes, you're still trying to figure out uh, how things are working. So you need to spend that much time uh, to be able to uh, add that value. So I would totally recommend, because I have done it for 15 years uh, so far, I, I would totally recommend that uh, figure out if you're able to uh, create that value, but if you're not able to do it, right? So like uh, what he said, if uh, your heart doesn't uh, say that, okay, this is not what, who I am, I'm sure I could do better, better somewhere, somewhere else, else then, then I think, think uh, that, that would give you a clear indication as uh, uh, don't, don't leave for money, leave for opportunities, is what, what uh, I, I would always say. say. So what Maslow's hierarchy says is, I think one of the fundamental things a human needs is like food and shelter, right? And once you get that, you aspire for love, then you want a uh, respectable position in society, and then other layer, the top layer is about getting uh, self-realization. I think in our life we are in different stages, right? So based on this, uh, Based on what level we are in Maslow's hierarchy, I think we need to take a decision. There is no one single answer for this, but if really you are asked, uh, you want to really gain a respectable position in society, you are still uh, trying to get better from a social and financial standpoint, yeah, definitely money is important. Uh, and as you climb up the Maslow's hierarchy, you really need to find your own purpose and uh, uh, drive uh, and I think you should put all your efforts for achieving that purpose. Okay, so uh, this is a story that many do not know. Probably I was sharing a part uh, of it to Nam a few, uh, few hours back. Uh, I visited this college even before. Uh, it was at least five and a half years back. Uh, where uh, back then I was working for the Gachipoli campus. Uh, so uh, the, the college has invited me and it's not easy to invite uh, say corporates to come and talk. Uh, you, you can ask sir who has been following up, he probably has sent uh, 25 messages, 3 emails to make me come over here. I'm sure he has tried the same thing uh, for others. It's very difficult to bring corporate because we are busy with our own work. But, but when you persist, so, it's, uh, so this, is, this is what happened. Five years back when uh, I was supposed to come here, uh, so the placement officer of this college really called me five, six times. Uh, so af after I agreed, uh, say they, they called me and said, sir, please tell us, uh, we'll set a car. I said, no, no, I'll come by my own car, don't worry. And that's exactly what I did even this time. Right? So, I, uh, so then the placement officer, a day before, called me up and said, uh, hey, uh, can you please uh, uh, tell me where you stay because I will come and pick you up just to make sure that you uh, follow the right path. Right? So I said, no, uh, I will come by my own means, don't worry, don't travel all the way. So I still remember when I came to the college, uh, so, so they just asked me, uh, uh, what car are you coming by? So the gates opened by itself. The, the moment, moment I turned towards the uh, right to come into this college, the security already knew I was coming, coming, so they opened the door. I parked my car right beside the portico uh, of uh, the main building. 
and uh, as, as soon as, as I got down, uh, uh, the f- uh, the hospitality of your college, uh, two girls uh, spray some water on me. Uh, I thought they, they thought maybe I did not take bath that day, but still. <laughs> so they poured some wa- uh, water on me and then uh, say they, gave, uh, they gave me a bouquet of roses. We went to the principal's office, uh, say, uh, where uh, the, they had some food for me. Had a very wonderful discussion with the uh, principal, and then we walked out to a seminar hall uh, where I spoke to the students for two, two and a half hours, and then I uh, had one of the best lunch possible in the campus, and I left home. Uh, and this was this was an experience. I, I went back and told my wife uh, the great experience I had. Uh, cut short to another three months. My wife works in a bank. Uh, she uh, so in government bank so she she had an exam a government exam uh, that she had to write uh, so the venue was this very college I looked at the hall ticket and said hey, I know this college I'll drop you so uh, again uh, ten o'clock was the uh, exam I came a little early nine o'clock so I turned my car towards the uh, of uh, the campus the security came running and said you can't enter I said what do I do just, just turn around, around and park the car on the other side. side. So, so we, we did, did that. that. So, so we came, came to the gate uh, asking, can we enter now? He said, no, wait. Uh, 10 o'clock, uh, we'll open the gates at 9.30. So we said, okay, we'll, we'll cross the road and back then that wall was not exist. So we sat on the other side of the road on a stone. Uh, and then all the scooties came, all the cars came, more people gathered. And slowly the gates, gates got opened. Uh, right, so my wife went inside, uh, and then there was some form of uh, say uh, silence because the exam was happening. I came to the gate and said, "Hey, can I, can I just enter because too too sunny out there?" Uh, he said, "Yeah, you can enter, but sit right there." Right, so by the side of the gate. So uh, I sat at the side of the gate. My wife comes after writing the exam and says, "I'm hungry." So, so I said, okay, let's figure out there's a uh, lunch available in the college canteen here. Uh, Secretary had said, no, you will have to go outside and eat. Right? So we went out and eat. So what I realized that, that, that happened in this very college. So uh, what I, uh, and uh, driving back, I was talking to my wife and uh, uh, I was just thinking, I'm the same person who visits the same organization two different times. Uh, what's the difference? Right? Both the, both the times I carried the same kind of intellect, I carried the same aspect. But I think on day one, the first time I came, I was coming all the way over here to uh, say have a conversation with uh, students back then, which means that uh, people are aware about what I'm capable of, people are aware about uh, what I can do, uh, what change I can bring in. The second time, nobody had that information. I did not call the placement of the Environmental College. The security was not aware who, was, uh, who I was and all that. So, uh, so I think the kind of satisfaction that you get when you get associated with a company like Infosys, right? Uh, see, the val- I'm, I'm just a normal human being who is actually supposed to be stopped at the gate, but got access still here and sitting on this chair because I'm associated with the kind of a job that I have and the kind of company that I'm associated with. I think, uh, uh, so, uh, and there's a lot of pride I get because of what, I, what I'm doing. Uh, so it's, it's, see, money will give you some kind of happiness, but at one point it's also about the kind of respect that you get in the society. The kind of uh, feeling that you get when you think that I'm changing lives of people. When I recruit, uh, when we, we talk to students about how to get recruited in Infosys, or when somebody comes and says, thanks, uh, because, because of you, my life changed. I think those are the moments for which we live for. Right? right? And, and I think if you're able to gather those, uh, no amount of money would uh, be able to equate that. But having said that, money is also important. While doing all this, I also take salary from emphasis. Right? So that is important for survival. Uh, but uh, don't get it really. Uh, look for uh, ensuring that you have a happy uh, life rather than a rich life.
Thank you so much for all the panelists for visiting the Abra University and giving our giving your valuable insights, sir. Now I would like to request uh, Shiva Prashant sir and Dr. K. Mamta ma'am to facilitate our guests. NSS claps goes to. Claps goes to Anasis Claps goes to Claps goes to all the participants do not leave the auditorium. We'll be taking a photograph, then only your attendance. <laughs> Dear participants, distinguished guests, and faculty, on behalf of Anurag University, I extend my heartfelt gratitude to the esteemed panelists who grace us with their insightful presence today. Mr. Pavan Kumar from ThoughtWorks, Mr. Nivas PCS from Infosys, Mr. Gautam, Associate Vice President at Colabra and Mr. Mahendra from Reliance Geo. We thank you for sharing your expertise and valuable perspectives with us. Your diverse backgrounds and experiences have enriched our discussion and provided us with a deeper understanding of the topics at hand. Your contributions have undoubtedly inspired us to think critically and innovate in our respective fields. We are truly honored we have had the opportunity to learn from each of you today. Your presence has made this event a resounding success and we look forward to the possibility of collaborating with you in the future. Once again, thank you for your time, dedication and valuable insights. Your participation has made a significant impact and we are grateful for your unwavering support. A wide round of applause to all the volunteers and participants who made today's talk a grand success. Thank you. Participants gather for a group photograph, like all, all of you come, come here the dash. All the participants are instructed to gather near the dash. 